What can soldiers do to, to prepare before they reach the transitional 12-month window, the pre-ACAP period? I always believe that you should have a plan before you actually have to jump in with both feet, so to speak. So I, I believe that soldiers need to take some time and, and uh, take a little responsibility for themselves and to understand that they are going to be transitioning out of the service and to look at some areas where they may need to take a look at. How are they doing with their civilian education? You know, where do they stand with their resume? Uh, do they have the keys to dress successfully for an interview? Have they spoken with some folks that may have transitioned out of the Army and understood some pitfalls? And then they need to speak with their commander, and the commander has a responsibility to speak with them. Other leaders, coaches, or mentors inside of their Army career should also be helping them, and they should be reaching out to, to seek some assistance. Well, typically when the Army Reserve or an Army National Guard soldier is activated for a tour of duty, that would not accommodate a 12-month transition training period because their orders aren't long enough. What advice would you have for these Army Reserve National Guard soldiers? How can they per get their ACAP training? That's a great question and we really need to be grateful for our Army National Guard and Army Reserves to continue to do what they do for our nation. Uh, however, when they're on a uh, mobilization order, when they are mobilized for more than 180 days, they may have a more uh, compressed schedule than the active component soldiers. So they've got to start right as soon as they get mobilized. And then there is, uh, depending on you know what their mo mobile order states, uh, they are going to be able to, to seek up to 180 days additional assistance after demobilization. So plan early and start early. If soldiers are involuntarily separated from the Army, for example, due to QSP, and notified with less than 12 months to separate, Will they receive the same transition opportunities as soldiers who are able to begin transitioning no later than 12 months from their separation date? Well, the first thing I want to make sure everybody understands is, is this is about being the most qualified, the best qualified person to stay in the Army. And so if a soldier is not the best qualified and they've had an opportunity to overcome their deficiencies, to get better, and it, it just is not happening, then we're probably going to ask them to leave the service. Uh, when they leave the service, uh, then really they've got to start uh, planning for what's next, you know, and really get involved with all the different avenues that the Army provides uh, and that the nation provides for folks that are leaving the service. You know, there is a great amount of opportunities out there for folks as they transition. But they really got to be honest with themselves, uh, accept that uh, it's time to move forward and to look at where it is that they, uh, they need to make some improvements on. And it's like the earlier question that, you know, do you have a resume? Uh, do you have uh, the right speaking abilities? You know, do you have the right writing abilities? Do you have the right education? Uh, do you have the right clothes? These are all important in, in you know, transitioning successful out of the service. And you've got to make that investment because it's really about the next stage of your life. So what are these different paths that are being prepared for soldiers as they begin their transition? You know, we're looking at expanding our tuition assistance program. We've uh, done a great amount of work with uh, the Veterans uh, Affairs and uh, the Department of Labor to bring together the different resources that are out there for service members, uh, in our case, Army soldiers who are leaving the service, uh, to find greater opportunities. We're working on a, a portal uh, that's one-stop shopping that allows folks to go to one place to gather the information to, uh, and to apply. And it's also for employers to have one place to submit their uh, jobs. So there's a lot of work that's going on right now. It started with the president saying this is what he needed to have happen for our nation. And the Department of Defense has partnered with the other departments to uh, uh, develop a, a comprehensive and robust program. And we want you to start a year out, which is probably one of the most important things. You know, you know, ACAP is a limited amount of time, and we know that it takes a lot longer than just a few days or a couple of weeks to actually pull this together. Uh, but it's also a personal responsibility in that you have to be responsible for yourself also. And that responsibility starts with the soldier entering the Army today. Is that uh, the information? to prepare them for their transition as soon as they come into the Army? Well, you know, it's interesting. When I came in the Army 30 years ago, I don't think I was thinking about what I was going to do when I left the Army. 
uh, and I think that you have to have uh, a, a more lifelong approach to this. And we've learned that over the years. You know, we're doing that with our education system now uh, for soldiers while they're in the service. Uh, but we also need to take into what we do with financial well-being and also, in this case, transition assistance, what comes next. How do you use the, the generous benefit of the post-9-11 GI Bill and apply that to something? you know, that benefits you in, in, in an area where you may have some expertise, whether that's in the technical field, an educational field, or, uh, you know, some other field to help you become better and be a better part of our society. Well, there's a senior Army leadership, such as the uh, Secretary of the Army, uh, Chief of Staff of the Army, and yourself. Why are you so interested and focused on improving transition assistance for soldiers? Oh, we've got to do better. We've had a great program. Uh, but we can do better. And in this period of a transitioning army, where our army is going to get smaller, we have to acknowledge the fact that we've asked uh, very, a very small population to do so much for our country. So how can we help uh, our warriors uh, transition successfully into the next stage of their life? That's important for us. You're a soldier for life, and your army's strong for life. And, and it's important to recognize that and actually put something in place that's going to help soldiers for the rest of their life. Oh, so what are some of these attributes or skills that soldiers possess that make them attractive to uh, civilian employment? Well, I think one of the greatest attributes is our Army values, you know, and, and how we have inculcated that into soldiers to say, this is who we are, and then to live those Army values and hold people accountable, and obviously discipline, motivation, willingness to get the job done, a never quit attitude. You know, those things are all uh, areas where our civilian employers are interested in and want. So you've already got somebody that's got those skills, why wouldn't they be the better candidate for a job? Well, it's just an honor to serve uh, our soldiers and the nation as a Sergeant Major of the Army. You know, uh, I serve the American people and the American soldiers and uh, it's an honor to be here. We're going to get better with transition assistance. We will. And a lot of effort and a lot of resources are going to make this program even better than what it is today. So look forward to the future.